Okay, time to talk a little March Madness NCAA Tournament stuff, and we are going to talk about the 1990 National Championship team and what the Rebels did that season. That remarkable season. Now it's been 32 years since, 31 years, since the Rebels won the National Championship as of me doing this video. So it's March 2021, and T Tark used to do this Tark, during Tark's final season, which is another one of these that I'll do at some point, but during Tark's final season, he would mention all the time to people that they, boy, they're going to they're gonna regret the time that they don't have NCAA tournaments to go to. That's what he would tell the media. Like, you guys get to go to all these tournament games in March, and, boy, there's going to be a time when it's not happening. <laughs> well, well, it's not happening, okay, for UNLV and the NCAA tournament. And he was, Tark was right when he said that. But anyway, 1990 National Championship team, they lost five games that year, three of them in the league league games. I think, who did they lose to? I probably should have looked that up first, but Santa Barbara with Brian Shaw. New Mexico State was very good, and maybe it was Irvine was the other team that they lost to that year. I'm not sure, but in, anyway, they, they ended up going to the NCAA tournament, just blowing everybody out, and then got to the national championship game in Denver against Duke. They beat Georgia Tech in the semifinal, and then took on, it was a good, tough game against Georgia Tech, and then no contest against Duke, and it was a 103-73 final score. I mean, talk to any Vegas sports fan, they know 103-73. They know the final score was there in McNichols Arena, which no longer exists, McNichols Arena. And there's two records that you look for in the NCAA tournament every year, Rebel fans do, and that's margin of victory for the NCAA tournament final game. And that's 30 points. Rebels set it that night against Duke, one by 30 points. And that has not, that's the record that still stands 30 plus years later. And also, no team has scored over 100 points in an NCAA tournament championship game. And the Rebels did it um, and won that national championship um, by 30, 103, 73 over Duke. And so when you watch the NCAA tournament, I know Rebel fans do, they look at that championship game and Pay attention to those two records. They also took on earlier, and that was in Oakland, they took on Loyola Marymount. And that was the year that Hank Gathers died. And Bo Kimball played for, uh, that was Paul Westhead's team that was run and gun up and down the court. It was just crazy, great basketball team. Anyway, they they took on the Rebels. And Tark, Tark was not concerned about that game. He he felt they could beat they could beat Loyola, and they did. They beat them uh, handily. Um, but the championship game, let's go back there. I, re I remember sitting, okay, in my seats there in McNichols Arena. It's the last time that the NCAA tournament has been played in a small arena. Okay, held 16, 17,000 for basketball. They're all in mega domes now. Super domes. So I remember sitting in the seats. We had great seats. Where, uh, the, they were a media section that was right next to the fans, and Lois Tarkany was right behind me. And, uh, and, and Susan Mulaski were sitting right behind me. And Lois had her rosary beads out, as she always does, and she's sitting there. And, and two minutes left in the game, and Rebels are up by 28. And she's got, she's got her rosary beads out. I turned around. I said, Lois, come on. You're in pretty good shape. You got. I think the Rebels are going to win this one. I think you're you're in good shape. You can you can calm down. And she, she looked at me seriously, and she says, no, Ron, you never know with the NCAA. <laughs> well, and she had a great point. You never know with the NCAA. And then uh, th there's a lot of videos that you could see, post-game interviews that I did in the locker room uh, with the Rebels. And one thing that was remarkable, Mike, uh, Mike Krzyzewski, coach for the Duke Blue Devils, after his team just lost by 30 points, he comes over into the Rebel locker room, and there's video of this. Again, you can look at the UNLV basketball page um, here section on my YouTube page and see it. But he came over, because we got video of it, he came over and congratulated Stacey Ogman and the Rebels on their play and said, you guys just played marvelous. You played one of the greatest games I've ever seen. And he was right. But that would, that had to be a tough thing for Mike Krzyzewski to do, but it was a classy move. I know UNLV fans like to hate on Duke. I get that, okay? But, but at the same time, that was a classy move that Mike Krzyzewski did coming over there and congratulating the Rebels. I did interviews in the locker room with the Rebels. That was fun. Um, most of the other media actually stayed where the press conference was going to be taking place. I like getting the interviews one-on-one -on -one in the locker room and did that. So that was that was fun. The national championship hung the banner. It's there, the Thomas Mac. It is 
I, I like to say all the time that the Rebels and the fans have the benefit and burden of history. The benefit, you've won a national championship, so you can do it again. Okay. The burden is you've won a national championship, and fans expect you at some point to do it again because you've already done it. So that, that, that's as the banner hangs, it, there's also a noose of sorts that hangs with the Rebels that they at some point need to get back to. Um, now, now, it's unfair to compare any coach nowadays to Tark and get back to that level. That's not what I'm doing here. But at least get to a decent level where you can dominate the, the conference. It's not, a bad, it's not a good conference, Mountain West, uh, and go deep in the NCAA tournament. So, And by the way, on this day, UNLV just announced they hired Kevin Kruger, uh, Lon's son, as the next basketball coach at UNLV. We'll see what he can do there, and maybe he can make some good things happen. I'm optimistic. I always am. Uh, that something good can happen here with that. But the national championship, the parade was remarkable. I was downtown for the parade, and then they eventually went to the Thomas and Mac where they had the big get-together. You could see that is also on the site. You could uh, see the parade and some of the festivities and some of the things that were done that time. But it was, it was remarkable. It was, uh, I, I will say this, that nothing brought this town and this community, Las Vegas, together like Rebel Basketball did when they were when they were playing great, um, when they were in their prime. And nothing tore it apart, like when it got torn apart. But anyway, that's a, that's another story for another day, a much longer one. Uh, but you can look at my podcast. I got a podcast on 8 News Now where I go over uh, some of the stuff, the rise and fall of, of Rebel basketball and what happened there. But it brought people, everybody in town were Rebel fans. On Friday, you, Fridays and game days, you would wear Rebel Red. And that's what people did. Wherever you went, people would ask you, about the Rebels. What do you think, Ron? What are they going to do? They're playing LSU and Shaq. Can they beat them on the road this weekend? What, you know, and the Thomas and Mack was rocking. Filled to the rafters and rocking uh, all the time. So that made, it, that made it a lot of fun. But anyway, there's my NCAA tournament stuff, Final Four. As Tark said, <laughs> boy, you'll regret, <laughs> you'll regret media guys not being able to go to the NCAA tournament every year. I used to call March my missing month with my wife. I'd say, hey, it's... You know, I'm, I'm gone for the month, which I was pretty much. And usually it would be two or three weeks out of the month. When you count the Big West PCAA basketball tournament in Long Beach and in the forum that happened prior to the NCAA tournament, because they would never play them here in Vegas. They wouldn't. I mean, they, <laughs> you wouldn't play it on the Rebels' home court, but the Rebels still won and dominated either way. So, anyway, that's it. That's the way I see it. Thanks for watching. See ya. Uh, subscribe, please.